What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here, still eternally battling this fucking vent. But be that as it may, I have a fantastic video for you today. I have a collab with none other than Shredded Sports Science, James, who's been putting out, in my personal opinion, fantastic content on YouTube, and he deserves more exposure. You see, James eloquently combines putting out real evidence-based information hashtag science with some humor in order to make it very watchable and also very practical. What you take away from the videos you can immediately apply with you at the gym. Which brings me to the collab video right now. We're talking all about muscle fibers. Consider this a science lesson. We're going to talk about type 1 muscle fibers, type 2A, 2X. We're going to talk about what they actually mean. We're going to talk about drop sets, tempo. James is going to go into detail right here and consider this once again a science lesson that will help better inform, or uh, I should say, will better inform your overall training. So I have to give a shout out to James, his channel Shredded Sports Science. Make sure right now you check out his channel and you subscribe. Link is in the description. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy James explaining what muscle fibers are and how it applies directly to your training, make sure to like the damn video. And without further ado, I'll let James take over the video. Dear Omaris of subscribers, I understand every muscle fiber in your body wants to check what's on Netflix right now, but bear with me. Fun fact, my favorite muscles are the facial muscles. They make me smile. What I want you to take away from this video is that multiple considerations of your muscle building training, such as your intensity, repetition, sets, exercise selection, all that juicy stuff that Omar has educated us about on his channel over the years, can be related to muscle fibers as another way of immersing yourself in the beautiful art that is resistance training. I'm James Linker, sports scientist and illegitimate YouTube person, and this is the powerful Omar of channel. When we see the bandana, we click. As with most things in fitness, concepts are nuanced and multifactorial. There are a series of ideas based in science, which you take away and apply to yourself because specificity is king. And so the growth of muscle fibers, AKA muscle hypertrophy, happens when there's an increase of sarcomeres in parallel. Oh, increase of sarcomeres in parallel. How exciting is that? And essentially sarcomeres are microscopic parts of muscle fibers. And I'm about to take you back to your Monday morning commute. <sighs> Think of the increase of sarcomeres in parallel as like people being stuffed into public transport like sardines. And that may be a simple way for you to understand the increase of sarcomeres in parallel. And therefore we have dynamic contractions in our training, the old stretch and squeeze, which are highly effective for stimulating muscle hypertrophy. And so firstly, you have to understand a motor unit, a motor unit being a motor neuron and all the muscle fibers that it activates. That's a motor unit. And within a motor unit, Unit, all the muscle fibers are of the same type. However, within a muscle, there will be several motor units and therefore several different muscle fiber types. Here is a scientifically accurate reconstruction of how motor units are innovated and muscle fibers activated. Pew. Trademark. So when a motor unit is innervated by the motor neuron, all of the muscle fibers in that motor unit are activated. And so essentially you can think of muscle fibers as being categorized as type one and type two. Type one known as slow twitch and type two known as fast twitch. And these type one fibers are more endurance based. They're oxidative and fatigue resistant. And they're the sorts of fibers that can sustain prolonged activity. Think the Duracell bunny. And so instantly you'll be able to associate the activation of type one fibers as related to lower intensity, more volume type protocols in your lifting. And then the type two fibers, which we can separate into two categories in themselves. And these are more power producing fibers, if you like, than type one fibers. The heavier weight, the acceleration, for example, with a pen lay row. Biometrics and Olympic lifting are other examples of type two focusing exercises. Type two A is still oxidative in nature, and they work over a relatively more extended period of time compared to the type 2X. The type 2X being glycolytic in nature, and they are the most powerful muscle fibers for those really high force, high intensity actions. However, the downside with type 2X fibers is that they tire easily. That's what she said. Make it that's what she said joke on the Omar Isof channel. Check. Think about your sessions. What exercises and protocols, for example, the intensity are you using that may innovate and be more related to certain types 
types of muscle fibers? Are you perhaps, for example, using a higher volume, lower intensity approach, perhaps integrating tools such as time under tension? And by time under tension, I don't mean sitting through the finale of Game of Thrones. It's more related to perhaps the type one fibers. What seems possible is that high time under tensions may promote greater hypertrophy in type one muscle fibers. By nature, slow twitch fibers are fatigue resistance as opposed to type two fibers. As with everything, you don't have to use time under tension for muscle growth. It is another tool that you may use. And there are multiple tools you can use to stimulate those muscle fibers for muscle growth, such as drop sets, supersets, pyramid training, isometric holds, towel rows. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call a fun weekend. Exercises should be varied in a multi-planar, multi-angled fashion to ensure maximal stimulation of all muscle fibers. It's important also to think about muscle fibers on a continuum. And why do we need to think of them on a continuum? Not just because I like to use words which I can't spell, but we also have hybrid fibers. Don't tell Elon Musk. And as the name would suggest, those fibers are a mixture of type one and type two. They are essentially transitioning from one fiber type to another. They just can't make up their minds. Mm. And so one very common question, which is answered terribly throughout much of the fitness industry is, can you change muscle fiber types? And the answer is categorically, yes, you can. However, the caveat being that it's more prevalent to convert hybrid fibers to type two rather than converting them to type one. Everyone wants to be the big dog. In the current state of research, it is not known how fast a change you can make, how much of a change you can make, the specific training protocols. And whilst that's the boring answer, that is the truth. When it comes to muscle fibers as a concept, there is still much to learn and much future research which will enlighten us on this topic. And very importantly and interestingly, we have the Henneman principle which relates to muscle fibers. We recruit muscle fibers in order. So when we're performing an activity, we are producing force. The lesser force producing activities, our body will just recruit those type one fibers needed. Our body basically does just enough because it's lazy. However, if we're performing a higher force production activity, for example, of squat with a higher intensity, our body will activate the type one, then the type two fibers, which are needed to overcome this resistance and produce this force. Hashtag disturbing anatomy picture. However, we all have muscle groups which are more dominantly fast twitch, for example, based on their function. Think of the hamstrings, which are a trigger for sprinting. But again, don't suffer from paralysis by analysis. Just be aware that there are different muscle fibers and they can be innovated and therefore related to different exercise protocols, which is a nice segue, which leads us into how do you train for hypertrophy when considering muscle fiber types? And again, there is no definitive answer. And indeed, Dr. Andy Galpin, who is a muscle fiber researcher and in my opinion, an expert says that we don't know exactly how to train. Do we focus more on the type two fibers, which are more sensitive to muscle hypertrophy. Type two fibers are essentially made to grow in size. Or do we use a training protocol where we're targeting a mixture of fibers? Or do we focus on type two and then type one? The way that I would look at it is it makes sense to use a balance. Because after all, when we are planning our training, it should be over our active lifetime, not just for Christmas. And so you can look at your meso cycles and your macro cycles. And over many years, you can be creative and you can experiment and you can use different protocols which can ultimately help you with your adherence to your training. Clearly, substantial hypertrophic gains can be made using low volume protocols. Such an approach therefore represents a viable muscle building option for those who are pressed for time or those to which the conservation of energy is an ongoing concern. A hypertrophy oriented program should employ a repetition range of six to 12 reps per set with rest intervals of 60 to 90 seconds between sets. That should be a t-shirt. And those are not contradictory statements by Dr. Schoenfeld. That is the correct way to project fitness information. Essentially, there are many ways that you can train as long as we have those base layer scientific principles of hypertrophy, such as progressive overload, dynamic contractions, protein intake, energy balance, consistently hammering on those muscle fibers over time. You can grow muscle using many different protocols. For example, change is adaptation. If you have a variety of exercise selection, for example, hitting different muscle fibers in your training, you can create different stimulus on your body. There are no hacks. Well, there are in YouTube fitness, I digress. There's just consistently in hard work and the repeated hammering of your muscle fibers over time to achieve your goals. Think about your history of training. Are you a beginner? Are you intermediate? Your history of injury, other characteristics such as your limb length, for example, which can influence your exercise selection and the way you train. Take all of these factors which are specific to you and this scientific principle of muscle fibers 
and apply it to yourself. This is the powerful Omar Isif channel. Thank you very much. When we see the bandana, we click. Well guys, that is the video. If you did not learn something today, well, my hat is off to you. That means you read a lot and you know a lot about training. Good for you. For everyone else, make sure to check out James. Link is in the description for his YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video. If you want to see more collabs, let me know in the comment section below who we should have on and what we should talk about. And that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll catch all you guys, my rascals, eating your fucking vegetables in that next video. Peace. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.